Welcome to the Go Find Out Podcast. I'm Jennifer Jelliff Russell, author, speaker, and entrepreneur, bringing you actionable ideas and interviews with awesome women to help you pursue your dreams and achieve your goals. You can find more episodes of the Go Find Out Podcast by visiting gofindoutpodcast.com. Enjoy the show and go find out. Welcome to the Go Find Out Podcast, episode number 35. I'm your host, Jennifer Jelliff Russell. Today is a solo show where I'll be talking about one big fear that tends to get overlooked, the fear of deflation. But before we get to that, let's jump into my personal update. Hello, go-getters. I had a bit of a hectic last minute errand running kind of week last week. And as mentioned in the last episode, I was seriously stuck in an endless cycle of scrolling through social media and the news. I've gotten this image in better this week and was able to finally finish my first round of edits on my next nonfiction book, which focuses on finding and applying for remote jobs. I've sent that off to my editor, Jennifer Fincher, and can focus on my other nonfiction book, which is about helping introverts get better at landing a job. Are you noticing a theme here with my nonfiction books? Um, So these are fairly short reads, and I've decided that for Ever Growth Coach, I'm going to really focus on creating more short read books which have a very specific focus in the jobs or career industry. And that way, when I do finally revamp my Ever Growth Coach website, I'll have more resources and products for visitors. And speaking of revamping my website and the Ever Growth Coach business, I've actually just hired my first coach ever. And I wanted to share why I decided to sign up for her services. So I just interviewed Megan Kuhar from the Creative Brand Sessions podcast this week, and her episode will air on February 8th. During the interview, I learned more about her creative entrepreneur coaching services and programs, and I ended up signing up for her online business booster program. And it wasn't something that she like talked me into or pressured me into doing or anything like that. So here's the thing. For the past two years, I've had this Evergrowth Coach business in the background. I started out creating resumes and providing one-on-one coaching. The problem was that I quickly burned out on creating several resumes a day, and even backing down to only creating one or two resumes a week wasn't enjoyable anymore. So I dropped all the services from my website and no longer provided one-on-one coaching, um, and then I only accepted resume requests if they came sort of organically from friends or contacts of previous clients. And after some thought, I finally decided to revamp my business into being more product-based rather than service-based. So instead of providing coaching and resume writing services, I wanted to focus more on offering books and courses to help clients land the job or level up at work. And that way I'm reaching more people as opposed to me kind of saying the same thing over and over to a few individuals. The problem is I've been sitting on this idea of like revamping and pivoting for the past year now, and I really haven't done much to make it happen. I really sort of need a kick in the pants to get going. And even more important, I don't want to spin my wheels for the first six months or so while I figure things out. And that is why I signed up for the Online Business Booster Program with Megan Kuhar. It sounds like Megan's program will really help me get more focused as I get started and will help me align my content with my clients. It will also provide me a really great support network of other creative entrepreneurs, which is really important. You know, I have found some great support groups on Facebook for, you know, being an author. And I've also found some great, really great support groups for being a podcaster. And I found those groups to be really helpful when I get started. So it would be really nice to have another group that is more focused on that sort of entrepreneurial side um, and actually like not just the creativity, but also the sales side of things. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked about getting started and it doesn't start until February 12th. So if any other creative entrepreneurs want to sign up, definitely check out the link in my show notes or you can visit Megan, M-E-G-A-N hyphen Kuhar, K-U-H-A-R dot com. And again, that will also be a link in the show notes. And I should mention that I'm not getting paid or getting a discount or anything like that for talking about Megan's program. I'm just really excited about getting help in getting my shit together. And it sounds like she is the right person to help me do that. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good update. Let's jump into talking about the fear of deflation. This podcast is all about going after your goals and kicking your fears to the curb in order to clear a path to those goals, right? So let's talk today about one of the fears you might experience when you set a goal or start to take action towards your goals. You've probably heard a million times about the fear of success and the fear of failure, right? Those are both pretty common fears when stepping out of your comfort zone and going after our goals. 
With the fear of success, it's when we fear what changes might occur in our lives or how our friends and family will react if we succeed at our goals. Fear of failure is, you guessed it, the fear of putting ourselves out there, going after our goal, and then failing to achieve that goal. Today, I want to talk about one of the lesser talked about fears that can be just as likely to trip us up when we're taking steps toward our goals, and that is the fear of deflation. A much longer, less fun way of putting it is that it's the fear of losing interest in our goal. Fear of deflation is when we're afraid that if we pick a goal and pursue it, that over time we might decide we don't want that particular goal anymore and that we'll have sunk time, money, and or effort into the wrong thing. Many times this fear stems from a loss of interest occurring before in our lives. Maybe you took gymnastics in middle school, then lost interest and felt like all that time spent practicing was wasted now and you're no longer interested in it. And if whatever you lost interest in cost your parents or you money, right, then there's that added stigma that you wasted your parents or your money. Fear of deflation also rears its head when we face making the choice to start something that requires a long-term investment of time. Something like going back to school or maybe writing a book are things that might trigger that fear of deflation because they're things that could potentially take a long time to do. We worry that we'll sink too much time into the goal, and by the time we finish, we'll have lost interest and have lost all that time that we could have spent on some other goal. So what do we do instead? We freeze. We don't bother moving toward our goals anymore because we're just too afraid of losing interest and wasting our time or money. We maintain the status quo and tell ourselves that we're perfectly happy where we're at in our lives. But it's a lie we're telling ourselves, right? And it's a direct result of being frozen by fear of deflation. For about seven years, I provided career coaching to veterans as they transitioned out of the military. One of their biggest mental hurdles during their transition into the civilian sector was when they had to choose a new career field in the civilian world. They would completely freeze up when trying to make the choice because they felt that they had to choose the perfect career field. They had the idea that they had to pick a career that they'd be stuck with for, you know, 20 plus years. And to be fair, many of those service members were retiring after 20 years of service, and most of them had really only known one specific career. So it made sense that they would expect to be at that next career for another 20 years. Some of these clients were so afraid of picking the wrong thing, of picking something that they worried they might dislike after a few years in the field, they simply didn't pick at all. They let the fear of deflation stop them from moving forward. The fear of deflation is a pretty common fear among those who start a business as well. And it's not an irrational fear. Plenty of people start a business and somewhere down the line, they decide that they don't want to do it anymore. Hell, I did this exact thing, right? Changing my mind about what I actually wanted to be doing on a daily basis in my business. And that's okay. It is okay to change your mind down the road. When people talk about figuring out the quote unquote perfect business or the perfect career, it reminds me a little of how we talk about soulmates and how they have to find the one, right? Or their one true love. But the one, whether it's for love or the right business or the right career, it's a myth. There are many different options out there for us. But with the fear of deflation, people become frozen by the very idea that they might choose a business or career that they'll lose interest in. So instead, they just decide not to choose anything. But going back to the dating metaphor, if you're so frozen with fear of deflation that you don't bother to go on dates and test things out because you don't know if the person that you're going to go on a date with is the one or not, right? Then you'll never find love because you'll never go on any dates. It's the same with starting a business or jumping into a new career. You've got to feel things out and you can't do that unless you take those first steps and actually get things started. The awesome thing is that you can always change your mind about what you're doing or you can pivot to something new. Whatever you choose to do might just be a stepping stone to that next thing. And most importantly, you wouldn't have known what that next better thing was unless you started toward that first goal or stepping stone in the first place. Take me, for example. I left a nonprofit position to start my own career coaching and resume writing business, Evergrowth Coach. As I mentioned in my personal update, it wasn't long before I realized it wasn't quite what I wanted to do anymore. I quickly burned out on writing resumes and the one-on-one -on -one coaching. I realized that while I really liked the coaching, the thing that I liked the most was speaking to my awesome clients and learning what was and wasn't working for them. I love to hear their stories and just learn about them in general. So after some thought, I decided to put my career coaching business on the back burner and start this podcast. Basically, I totally shifted to interviewing badass women about their experiences so more people could hear what those women went through and apply those lessons to their own lives and go after their own goals. 
And keep in mind that I haven't completely shut down Evergrowth Coach. In fact, now that I've had some time to step away and think about it, I have a better idea of what I want to do with it next. And I wouldn't have known what I want to do now if I hadn't started the old version of the company in the first place. It was just a stepping stone. So next time you feel frozen by the fear of deflation and aren't sure that you should move forward with your goal, here are some things that you might try. The first is do some basic research on the thing that you want to do. Honestly, if you think that you're going to lose interest too quickly in whatever your goal is, then spend a week or two doing research on whatever that thing is. If you get bored while doing the research, then hey, maybe it wasn't for you. And as someone who tends to jump from one great idea to another, especially when it comes to what books I should write next in fiction, spending a little time doing research has helped me to kind of figure out which topics I wouldn't have stuck with for an entire book and which topics or storylines that I only grew more excited about during the research phase. Research might look different for whatever thing that you're planning on going for, right? Whatever your goal is might have a different type of research needed. So if you're going back to school for a degree, then look into what kind of jobs that you might get with that degree. It might not be the one specific thing that you're planning on going for, right? You might find out that there's a ton of other job opportunities available for that particular major. If you want to start a business, look into what that business might look like in a year or two by checking out similar businesses that have been around for a year or two. If those companies that you look into won't be your direct competition, then call up the owner and see if they'll chat with you about their experience. That is some great research. And the great thing about research is that if you find that you're only getting more excited about your goal as you do the research, then it's unlikely that you'll get bored or lose interest in this goal. And now let's say research doesn't thaw you from your fear of deflation. Instead, you might try this to push through your fear of deflation, and that is to write down what you do if you don't pursue this goal. So if you decide to not move forward with whatever your goal is, what's the alternative? Do you have a different plan or goal that you'll pursue instead? If you're less afraid to go after that other goal, then go for it instead. However, if you're just as afraid to go after that other goal, and you're more enthused by the idea of going after that first goal instead, then why not take a chance on that first goal? And if you don't have any other goals or plans right now, then if you don't pursue your dream, what then? I'll tell you what then, and you're not going to like it. Nothing changes. Because if you don't do the work of taking some steps towards your goals, then they won't happen. You can think happy thoughts and try to manifest your dreams all you want, but if you're not willing to actually put yourself out there and take those steps towards your goals, then they aren't going to occur, right? They're not going to manifest themselves. So your choice then is this. Pursue the goal that you're passionate about right now with the possibility that you might or might not achieve what your dreams are or continue to sit frozen in the fear of deflation and change nothing about your current situation. I know what I'd pick. Now, the last suggestion for pushing through your fear of deflation is this. Consider what is the worst case scenario if you pursue your goal and lose interest. Don't sugarcoat this. If you're going to spend a lot of time and or money on this goal, then you want to be straight with yourself. Let's say that you're deciding if you really want to go back to school for a master's degree, but you're afraid you might get bored of that particular field. Listen, if you did some research on the school and the degree and you're still interested, then I say go for it. Yes, it will cost money. Yes, it will take around two years to complete. But if you get bored of that particular field, chances are that there is something else that you could use that degree toward. As an example, I have a master's degree in community counseling. I initially wanted to provide counseling to veterans with PTSD, but I realized that this wasn't really a good fit for me after I got the degree, worked in a prison, and had about 1,500 hours toward my 3,000 hours needed towards licensure. I was definitely on the path of what I thought I wanted, and I lost interest. However, I looked at what I enjoyed doing, and then I pivoted my goal. And I used that degree to get a position in which I helped veterans with employment coaching as they transitioned to the civilian world. When I started my degree, I had no idea that writing resumes and providing employment coaching would ever interest me. And yeah, I've changed my mind again about what I want to do, and that's okay. Again, my degree was a stepping stone, and the worst thing that could happen happened, right? I mean, I went into debt to get my degree, and I ended up not pursuing a career in that particular field. When considering whether to pursue the degree or not, that was what I considered would be the worst case scenario, was losing interest and not going after a job in that field. 
If you want to start a business, as an example, probably the worst case scenario is that the business doesn't do well or fails, right? But in all likelihood, that failure will lead you to your next business idea. Or maybe while starting the first business, you connect with someone who becomes your business partner in your next uber successful adventure. But you won't make those connections or, you know, network with the right people or discover that next stepping stone unless you push through your fear of deflation and actually take that first step. You know, I used to have a bookmark from the Kennedy Space Center that said, if we don't go, we'll never know. I think about that a lot, and it really helps me to get moving towards my goals. I hope that that helps jettison you in taking action toward achieving your goals and pushing through the fear of deflation. All right, go-getters, that is it for this week. Join me next week when I interview automation specialist Michelle Thompson about how she built a specialty around helping other businesses automate their systems after she experienced a stroke and had to learn how to automate her own daily systems in order to regain control of her life. Until then, go find out. Thanks for listening to the show today. I hope you found the information beneficial and that it helps you tackle your own go find out goals. You can find more episodes and the show transcripts at gofindoutpodcast.com. You can also let me know what you thought of the show by tweeting me at GFO Podcast or follow me on Instagram at gofindoutpodcast. That's it for today. Now go find out. <laughs>